Imagine this scenario for a second. Your traditional medical options are exhausted and you still don't have a cure for what ails you. Then a glimmer of hope from the Amazon, not the online retailer, but the real life Amazon rainforest of Peru. That's the premise behind a new film, Icaros, a vision. It's currently on the marquee at the Tribeca Film Festival, and we've got a clip. ¿Estás tomando alguna droga? No. Tampoco puede tomar remedios farmacéuticos, antibióticos o pastillas para dormir, porque chocan. ¿Chocan? Sí. La ayahuasca es una planta muy celosa. Necesito hablar con el maestro chamán antes de la ceremonia. No hay problema. Se van a conocer. Beautiful. That felt like a moment of zen with something underlying there. Well, that was the trailer for Icarus, a vision. Shot on location in the rainforest of Peru with actual shaman and non-actors from the native Shipibo community. Now, we should mention that our Brick TV executive producer, Mr. Aziz Ashim, was one of the film's producers. But right now, the co-director is here to tell us more about this mystical movie saga. Welcome to BK Live, Mateo Thanks so much Morzi. for having me here. Thanks so yeah. much. Glad to have you. After Let's that, begin especially. by letting you tell us what the inspiration for this film was. Yes, uh, the film was actually inspired by personal experience. My co-director and I, Leonor Caraballo, uh, went to Peru, where we got introduced to ayahuasca shamanism, as practiced uh, today by the Shipibo Conibo people. Mm -hmm. Actually, we landed in the same uh, healing center that, uh, that became the main location of the film. Wow. What can you tell us about ayahuasca? So, ayahuasca is a, is a plant medicine with a uh, hallucinogenic effect that uh, is used traditionally in the Amazon to cure any kind of disease. Mm -hmm. They also call it the television of the forest. So shamans are your colleagues somehow also. Very cool. So what is the relationship of the shaman to the ayahuasca experience? So basically the two, the, the two work together. The shaman sings, mm -hmm. uh, let's say, a lullaby. You, imagine that you, you have a fever and your mother is trying to calm you down with a soft lullaby. The same happens with the shaman, trying to guide you through your visions, through singing and other, and other uh, actions. And that's tied to the title, Icaros. Exactly. Icaros are these legendary healing songs mm -hmm. that actually attracted us to go to the Amazon to begin with. We couldn't believe that the song could have a healing power. Yeah. It's a oh. fascinating film and fascinating location. What were your, some of your takeaways 
shooting there in Peru. Yes, ex exactly. Shooting in Peru was very challenging. We, we shot uh, in the city of Iquitos, which is famous also because it was the main location of uh, Fitzcarraldo. Fitzcarraldo. I, my friend Amy just went there. Go on, though. That uh, is a phenomenal uh, film, of course. Exactly. So we shot the same kind of like uh, logistic uh, difficulties because mm -hmm. the city is not connected to the world with the road. So you need to fly or take a boat to get there. And so yeah. for the heavy equipment of a film is very challenging. How's the Wi-Fi? Uh, well, there was no Wi-Fi, there was no <laughs> phone, you know, it was really, really challenging for the crew. You know, we were like 40 people in the middle of the jungle, oh, wow. you know, in a camp. 40 people, and then your actors, and you were co-directing there, but yes. uh, there is a sad part of this. This is sort of a living tribute to your co-director. Yes, I mean, uh, it's sad, but there is no grief uh, in, uh, in remembering uh, Leonor, because uh, Leonora passed away after a long battle against breast cancer during the post-production of the film, yeah. and she actually got diagnosed before going to production, and she decided that she wanted to direct okay. her afterlife. Uh, through this film. Yeah. So the film is very much of a healing experience for, for us at least, and I hope for the audience of Tribeca. Well, I mean, it's extremely profound. I mean, what is the experience like on set knowing that those are the circumstances surrounding the shoot? Well, she, obviously everybody got uh, the stakes raised because of, of her commitment to the project, and uh, that was also the reason why uh, the crew uh, over, uh, overcame all the daily problems, like tarantulas and bats and... and, <laughs> yeah. and tarantulas and bats. It's no joke out the there in the Amazon. Thing. Mystery jungle fevers, you know, they almost killed our data manager, you know, everything. Many, many stories happened during the production. I hope yeah. they got time and a half. Um, <laughs> now, I want to know more about shooting in the Amazon. What were the shaman like? What sort of actors did you find amongst the shamans? Well, we had a relationship with the shamans before uh, deciding to do the film. So because we went there, you know, and we worked with the same shamans that we, we end up uh, trying to direct. Yeah. It's a funny story because the shaman is an artist himself. He, oh. He's actually the director of your vision. He's able to edit images directly into your mind. So I, in, I wanted to know, in the movie, the shaman is actually having issues and losing his vision. Yes. Was that creative license? or was Well, I, in real? the beginning, we wanted to write a script about a, a shaman uh, going blind mm -hmm. in just exposition with the, the Westerns looking for a vision, a revelation. Gotcha. Then just after, when uh, Leonor got diagnosed with, uh, with uh, metastatic First. breast cancer, we introduced the character of the woman looking for a miracle. So both of this uh, fiction and reality, they mix together throughout the process of filmmaking. Okay. And uh, for those who don't know, can you tell us more about the connection to Werner Herzog, the famous director? Y yes. So he, sh he, he said, uh, um, only dreams can move a mountain. And in this sense, we, we wanted to mirror in these words. But I also want to take a distance from Fitzcarraldo, because the, the original uh, uh, Brian Fitzgerald, the rubber baron who inspired the story of Fitzcarraldo, committed atrocity against the indigenous population. So we dislike the glorification of his name. Right. Nevertheless, we love uh, Herzog's films, and, uh, and we, we met on location. We used one of his locations also for our own film, which is uh, uh, Hotel Casa Fitzcarraldo, who used to host uh, Kinski and Cardinale during the production. Yeah, that hotel is there. There's pictures from the movie up exactly, and stuff like that. Exactly. Now, is Herzog a big influence for you? What are some of your favorite Herzog films? Well, you know, I, I like a lot, like Fata Morgana and also uh, this last one with the ca Cave of the Forgotten Dreams. I like the way that he makes fiction and uh, reality, of course. So, so that's, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm not, no. I don't think Brian's ever seen Grizzly Man. I'm going to show it to him one time. I have cool. only the very last scene. But uh, right. I wanted to ask you, mi mixing that fiction and the reality, about the native Shapiro people who uh, you brought non-actors in. I just wanted to know about sort of introducing that filmmaking experience into their lives, which must have been so foreign, but still respecting the culture and taking the sort of anti-view yeah. of what happened before when people sort of yeah. planted themselves in their culture. Well, first of all, shamans are performers, so they perform every night, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, in, the, in the ceremonies, you know, when the, the, the lights fade off, they are, they are like actors on stage, uh, somehow. Yeah. And then I need to say that uh, my co-director, Leonor, had a great talent and established a very deep relationship with the indigenous uh, people, and, and thanks to her, her, her ability, we were able to direct them into, into a project that was so strange for their own uh, yeah. experience. How much time did you spend in the Amazon completing the film? 
Well, the shoot was six six weeks, but uh, you know, with pre-production and and all the location scouting, I spent more time in the Amazon than in Brooklyn in the last three years. <laughs> oh my gosh! And what was your experience, if any, in the Amazon before you went to produce the film? So, well, the very first experience in the ayahuasca center was so strong for us that we decided to leave behind any other uh, uh, project. We are artists, so we left behind any other uh, exhibition project really? and dedicated Just ourselves to do this uh, this film. Yes. What was your experience? The first time you did ayahuasca, well, did you? Did, what did you vision? Like, what did you have visions of? Well, I had vision of my childhood and the and the animals of the forest. It's like a fantastic dream, you know, that you remember in detail. So, and, it, and then it's different every time. So, you know, I tried it several times. So, uh, I had different kind of experiences, positive and and also harsh. Yeah, harsh. Yeah. So we've heard that there's a divide between uh, people who are shaman and who practice this ayahuasca practice. Uh, some people are like attracting tourists, where other people are doing real healing and promoting the culture. Was there any tension while you were there between those sort of two camps? Of course, I mean, there is a, a lot of charlatans down there because it's becoming a business. So, you know, people need to watch out when they go to Peru to make sure to go to the right people. Mm -hmm. But uh, for uh, we got lucky because we, uh, following this fantastic song, we end up going to uh, one of the best shamans that, that, that were around there, yes. Yeah. And how would the film affect that sort of uh, dynamic amongst the shamans, or would it at all? Well, sh shamans, uh, shamanism is also a way to control power in, in the Amazon. So here we like to believe that it's all about healing mm -hmm. and white light, but shamans do sorceries to each other. And, and so, you know, of course, we gave exposure to a family and, uh, and somebody else maybe was envious, but we did it with the best intention. So I think uh, that's why everything worked out fine. So talking about the film once more, it seems to have this very beautiful, quiet, still quality, but then we saw that a uh, few frames of something else there. I wanted to ask you about that magical realism that seems to be present there and how you classify the film. Yeah, I mean, I don't like to really give a label to my own film, but uh, it's, a, it's a hybrid, you know, because there are some uh, uh, realistic aspects in the story and there is also an attempt to reinvent the psychedelic aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So we had some sequences that are, are going to be surprising. Yeah. How did you meet your co-director, Leonor, and form that partnership? Well, well uh, the moment we met, like five or six years ago, we, we bonded into a, a very, very deep friendship, a continuing ex exchange. And uh, we attempted many projects together. Uh, most of them failed. <laughs> this one is the only one that was bigger than our lives. And we, I'm glad that we were able to, to, to accomplish it. How did you begin as a filmmaker? So uh, I, my background is into contemporary art. This is a film that was produced, written, and directed by artists. So it was a group of mad people uh, working down there in the Amazon. And then we found this uh, idea for a narrative that uh, we thought was better to be told uh, in the form of a, of a fiction film. So we just improvised ourselves uh, and, and became filmmakers. Uh, nice. So what's next? So, several projects. We are still working with the Shipibo Conibo uh, community with other projects about uh, art and music and performance here in New York. And then uh, I'm also in the beginning of, of drafting a new script, uh, again about the Amazon, this time about the myth of uh, telepatine, which is uh, this strange molecule that uh, brought CIA and KGB to the Amazon in the 50s with the idea of finding a way to mass mi mind control. Wow. Oh, my gosh. There's still so many secrets in the Amazon. Yeah. Say. Not to harp on the ayahuasca, but that's kind of being Americanized. It's being brought to America. What are your thoughts on that? Well, it's, a, it's an opportunity and, and a risk, you know, but uh, nobody else is actually paying attention to what's going on into the Amazon, only, you know, people who actually go there for journeys. So I think overall it's a, it's a good opportunity for the indigenous community to find a spot in the contemporary world. Mm -hmm. You know? So how can folks get yeah. in and see Icaros, a vision? So Icaros is finally premiering at Tribeca Film Festival, the first screening. All the tickets are sold out, but there are possibilities for rush tickets. Okay. So the first screening is on Saturday 16, and then we are going to have five more until the 24th. Oh. We're re I'm really excited to see it. It looks yeah. brilliant. Matteo, thank you very much for oh, being thanks here. Thanks so much for inviting me. Yeah, we look forward to all your future work as okay. well. Okay, thanks so much.